Okay, now we're down to the third occurrence of a poker taste, and it has a few key differences. First of all, this isn't Christ talking, but it is the wise virgins talking. So presumably when they talk, they're, uh, what do you want to call it, aware, understanding of scripture, because they're called wise here. Not prudent, wise. It, this has to do with wisdom in your head, operating in your head, from Namoy. You can go look it up in any lexicon you want. It does not mean prudent. It's usually translated prudent, but it really means wise. Okay, wise in what? Wise in the word. So if you're wise in the word and you say something, technically speaking, the person hearing you shouldn't just automatically accept it. But if you're wise in the word, God himself is going to witness to the hearer that what you're saying is true to the extent true. And therefore, in, in that sense, you you end up speaking for God. You're speaking out of the doctrine in your head, and because you throw Nemoy, you're filled with the Spirit. Therefore, between sins, you can't be lying or make a mistake. You have to sin. If I make a typo, then I just sinned. I don't know what sin it is necessarily, but I can't even make a typo while I'm filled with the Spirit. It doesn't mean you know everything. It doesn't mean you have all your doctrines correct. But you do have to sin in order to, to you know, reaccess some false doctrine you believe. Alright? You're believing a lie. That's a sin. Alright? So there's a sense of them talking for God here. Alright? So now we apply the same principles as before. Here's the clause where apokritesan is the version of it, occurs. So now you say, okay, what happened before? And of course, this is when World War I starts at the end, at the tie, a spenun tie, which means falling asleep, which is a metaphor of, of dying. And actually, it happened up here, too. Here in Matthew 25 5, while the bridegroom is delaying, they get drowsy. And they all fall asleep. They all begin to fall asleep. They haven't quite fallen asleep totally. That is 1832 by the end. The next section is about the Civil War. And there was a kind of Civil War going on all over the world. But it was local. But it was happening repeatedly. Um, England started having something of a civil war over whether there should be slavery and they finally just abolished it. It wasn't, you know, military civil war. There was the brewing of the Franco-German disputes that were going on and that would end up with the War of 1870. But this clause is ending in 1856. That's telling you what was starting to happen. This clause ends in 1882 all right, and so from somewhere around 1856, all right, in the middle of the night when the Lord comes, somewhere 1856 to 1882, there's a wake-up call. Oh, here's the bridegroom. Remember that was the 1840s, Tischendorf. All right, so if this is 1856, then this really starts here. San Pasa High, which ends up meaning the virgins, okay? They rise, they all rise up. Well, in the, in the U.S. Civil War, that's exactly what happened. I have a lot I could say about the U.S. Civil War, but one of the big things is that Christianity was extremely popular in the United States. And as a result, there came to be a sort of competition. And as a result of that, there came to be this argument about whether slavery was Christian or not. And frankly, it's, it's a sort of sad story because Lincoln 
um, who was very much a Bible reader, was very dedicated to preserving the Union, and secession was the big topic during that those black syllables. They all rise up. And unfortunately, in his mind, he's being real self-righteous about it. Oh, we're going to preserve the Union over this really bad thing called slavery. But what he's really doing is he's asserting federal power over the states as a result of that war. He dies a week after it ends. All right. And there is absolutely no help that comes to the southern blacks as a result of their being free. No help at all. So how good was it? And what ended up happening is the problem we have today a federal dominance over the states. Lincoln put that put the seal on that. And the blacks didn't even end up getting helped. And Reconstruction during the Reconstruction period, they were more abused than they were before they were when they were still enslaved. By 1870, it was like they would have been better off if there had never been a, a civil war in the first place. All right? And the problems we have until today were set in stone here. All right. So they, all the virgins rose up and they trimmed their lamps. So by 1882, we got Bible doctrine as never before. Because this is during the period of Trigellus. Actually, Trigellus' discoveries start just about here. Everybody was in the Bible. This was the way the U.S. operated. Okay? And, and quite frankly, the blacks were more in the Bible than the whites. Which is probably one reason why there was a civil war. Because one of the things that the white slave owners did is they evangelized the, their black slaves. They were real big on that. Taught them how to read and write and learn Bible. That was the rage in the South. That, when I say rage, I mean that was the fashion. That was what everybody believed in doing. Okay, but during Reconstruction, they now have no economic handle. So they end up going slipping back in the same old ways as pre-war. So that's a precursor. Alright, and how do we know that's a precursor? Because this is the end of the clause prior to Apocrino. But the clause prior to Apocrino is in two parts. And it itself is a result of the Civil War that occurs here. By the end of that Civil War, Bible is still all the rage. There's no officially no more slavery anymore, but actually the conditions are just as bad or worse than they were before the war occurred. There was a huge rise, largely in part due to the Civil War, a huge rise. And not merely Joseph Smith, but every kind of alternate false doctrine you want to name. Spiritism, spiritualism, We some of those were already going on in Europe and they were, you know, sort of imported in the United States but if you go look at the 19th century Christianity it was full of every cockamamie idea you want to mention but everybody was saying oh this is Christian okay it was popular to be Christian it was popular to know and learn and read the Bible it was extremely popular to learn and read it in Hebrew and Greek and everybody and his brother was publishing some kind of translation during that time based on the Hebrew and Greek. Alright? But there was a lot of false doctrine. In other words, yeah, okay, good. You can read the text. Can you understand it? And the answer was clearly no. Alright? So coming out of the Civil War should have been a happy time. But it wasn't. So now, the foolish, the ones believing all the false doctrine, they start, they're on the stage, starting in 1882 onward. Now this is the most prolific period of Bible discovery and apt teaching and lexicons that has ever been in history since the first century. The Bible is more free at this time than it has ever been since Christ was on the earth. <clears throat> 
but it's only local to the United States that it's that free. And because it's that free, there's war. And because it's that free, their believers are politicizing right, left, and center. And because it's that free, there's a whole lot of false doctrine out. And now, the foolish, foolish, are saying to the wise ones, Give us your oil. That's the clause that this apocrines, apoc, Apecrintesan is addressing because it's a long period and it ends here and it ends with World War One, and this itself is World War One. But what, why, how does World War One address something prior? What is the prior? Well, Look at the text. That's what you always interpret. The foolish are saying, give us something you got. Because what we got isn't enough. Now that's politics. That's what po politics is all about. It's a struggle for one group to get something from another group. In the name of some moral principle. That's why That's why the Civil War started. It was a, a, alleged that the South had something that the North didn't have cheap labor. And they wanted to demonize it based on the few bad ones in order for the federal government to take over, dominate the states. It was evil. It was evil to have slavery, yes, but it was more evil for the federal government to use as a pretext to take over the states. This is why we have the problem with big government. It started with Lincoln. Now he didn't mean it to turn out the way it did, but that's how it turned out. So down here we got World War One as a consequence. And the states have a whole lot less power going into World War One. Now going into World War One, you have all these foolish virgins. And it's not just in the United States that they're foolish. Because what are they saying in Europe? One is saying to the other, well, give me your territory. Give me your this. Give me your that. This is the rise of, um, especially here, in this clause part. But it's real, it's real, uh, you know, uh, satirical. Give me what you got. Yeah, how did the Soviet Union rise? Give me what you got. All right, so this, there's a, still a civil war quality going on here, because you got the you got the poor saying to the rich, "Well, you're you're only rich based on our labor. Give me what you got." And so you have the beginning of one nation siding with another nation in order to take something away from a third nation who sides with the fourth nation and the third nation and the fourth nation really want to take stuff away from the first and second nation so what is the difference between that and the civil war while well, the civil war was in one country okay but Europe is all contiguous so in a way it's like the tale of the two civil wars only we're calling this one World War One. And the United States is busy saying, well, I don't want to be in that. And we were all high and mighty about it, too. So, World War I is the answer to a bunch of people between their, their local civil wars getting too greedy and saying, okay, well, give me what you got. So, World War I has to be the answer to that. It's a result. Remember, it was a result that he said, up here, Dapocrates is a result of temple going down. The killing or the dying of Marcus Aurelius is a result of the Roman mobs turning anti-Semitic and turning anti-Christian. 
All right, I'm not saying that they never had reason to be anti, but I am saying that the persecution wasn't warranted, and they're blaming the Christians because it, the plague started in the Middle East. They're blaming the Christians for that. Oh, you brought the plague with you. Uh, no, they'd already been there for a hundred years. It was the troops that were under Aurelius that brought the plague back. And they didn't even know that was what was going on. So you've got that kind of pattern going into going into now our next occurrence, our modern occurrence, with here World War One, the backdrop of it, were local civil wars that were occurring, that had been occurring, not necessarily as a full scale war in England, but definitely as a full scale war in uh, Europe with the various countries and a breakup was occurring in each one of those countries. You know, like Tsar, the the dad of Tsar Nicholas, I think his name was Alexander the Second. He was the guy who ended up getting the Tischendorf manuscripts and wanted them. Um, he, he ends up dying because somebody throws a bomb at him when he's he's disembarking. So they had their their ups and downs, and this one marks is out and. You know, all that stuff is going on, plus all that weird religious note, all those weird religious notions. So, in many ways, the secondary result is World War One. Alright, and what's the content? Again, there's a talking, and the wise ones are saying, there's not enough for both of us and you. You go get your own. You go buy your own. So... When it says you go by, that's World War II. And like I said before, a lot of historians think that you know World War I was just the beginning and World War II is the end, so it's all really one big war in here, all over the world. Because the outgrowth of World War I was the victors, you know, Wilson in particular, of, of the United States, were very vindictive. And you still got the same argument going, give us, give us what you got. Wilson and the French were busy saying, oh, well, you know, Germany's got to pay reparations. They had a Treaty of Versailles, which was extremely onerous. And, oh, you got to pay us and pay us and pay us and pay us and keep on paying us. It was, it was so bad that that's one reason why Hitler rose to power. Is the Germans were saying, well, okay, we're wrong, but we really didn't start this war. Willie did. Wilhelm II, I think it was the second. Willie started the war. We were just obeying him. So, you know, this is too onerous on us. And that's why they started listening to Hitler, because Hitler was busy saying, ah, the Treaty of Versailles is wrong. The Treaty of Versailles is too, too mean. And when you go back and look at it, it's like, oh, you know, revenge, 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 revenge. Well, how Christian was that? So, World War I, followed by World War II. And what's so astonishing about these cute little keywords is this is to answer as in a judgment. And Boruomai is a, a sort of answer also because it's a pouring forth. And this is one of the keywords that's used in Daniel 9, in Daniel 9.26. There's a pouring forth of troops. Okay, well, it's got a military connotation when it says that Father sends the Spirit, whether f the filial clause, okay, whether Father sends the Spirit or the Lord spends the, sends the Spirit or both of them. No, the Spirit sends Himself. The Father plays Father. There's no difference in their equality. They just choose to have different roles. So we call one of the gods God the Father because He chooses to play the Father role. We got another one who's called the son because he chooses to play a son role. And then we got another one we call the Holy Spirit who calls himself mom in Genesis 1 2. Calls himself a mother hen, literally. The Hebrew verb there is for a half. Well, he likes to pour forth. Just like he restored the earth, he intends to restore you. He pours into you. That's John 14 26. Okay? So pour forth instead. 
Yeah, instead of making a, a you know a decent recommendation and a decent why statement, and wait a minute, there's not enough for both of us. We shouldn't you know, we're, we shouldn't take what you got. No, they're they they interpret pour forth to buy your own as well. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna just seize it from you. So that's why World War Two is going on here. So World War Two, as it were, is the content. Following the Apocrisan, just like the content following Amin Lego Humin, or Ublepete following the content of Temple Down, or Blepete Me Planese, don't get deceived, following the content of Apocrino here. So it's all related to the prior clause, and so it's true here all related to the prior clause. What happens here, World War One, is related to everybody saying, give to me what you got. And that was going on, you know, since the mid-1800s. So it finally turns into a worldwide war against other nations because you couldn't get what you wanted from within your own nation. Your own civil war didn't work out. So now you're going to turn outward to try and get it. So, World War One is a result of all that, and World War Two is a result of World War One. Now, this is where it gets scary. This is our text. This is the next occurrence of Apocrites. We have seen three instances that follow a certain sequence. And the one here in particular is the same wording as was used for Temple Down right here. See? Same words. So, ooh, how close is this going to be happening now? See, this is our period now. That last coup is 2017. So this is what's coming up in 2024 through 2030, the 2000th anniversary of Christ's death. And it's seven because all historical trends, because he died seven years early, are just like Daniel 9.26. Roars and rumors of wars till I come. It's, it, there are two tribulations, really, or uh, two s types of tribulations. The first one is literal, happening at the end. But the second one, because it's a time bubble, because he died seven years too early, is going to have all the characteristics of that period of time had he lived. And had he lived, that was supposed to be tribulational. He was supposed to die at age 40, and then there were 57 years left on the clock. And then the millennium was supposed to happen. As a result of him dying, had he lived to be age 40, there was going to be war between the Gentiles and the Jews. So, guess what? It's wartime. And sometimes it reaches tribulational quality, especially when it's an anniversary, you know, a significant anniversary of his death, which is at 490, 70, 490, and also at 1,050. Well, this is the 2,000th anniversary of his death coming up in 2030 A.D. And we got this. So what's the prior clause that this is answering? Oh, our boy Trump, who comes into power here, who started campaigning here, comes into power here, and now we're at his first year in office. This is what's wrong. This is major bad stuff. Being analogized or paralleled to Temple Down. And oh, by the way, every time we've come up with these things, the dif difference between here and here is divisible by seven. Okay? In the prior, it's divisible by seven to that one. And it's divisible by seven again to that one. In our particular case, 
the ending because they always change whether or not they're going to you know include the whole or just part of it all right here 2018 2018 minus and I think it's uh, 1736 I'm trying to remember uh, wrong one Okay, I, I'm not quite sure how they do it. Do it. 1976. All right, 1976 divided by seven. I'm not sure that's the right number. Okay, it's 1974. 2016. Okay, so it's going to 2016. Okay, so 1974 is the distance, divisible by 7, is 282, alright, so 1974 years plus 42, which is where the Apocrites started, is 2016, so, so it's, it's tagging when Trump was elected, right here, alright. So 2016 minus that start because that's syllable 42 divisible by seven. What is that telling you? It tells you that it's intentional. It's intentional the placement of these words, and you're supposed to be careful when they seven. And you're supposed to pay attention. I hope you realize that this text is deliberately constructed in this particular order because to make it seven every time, you have to know, especially if you're tying it to, to history, you have to be God to do that. For God to make a parallel between our time now and temple down, aftermath, after the temple is down, the triumph and, and you know, taking uh, the menorah to... Uh, Rome to make that kind of deliberate parallel and have it be divisible by seven should make you sit up and take notice oh this is intended God is drawing deliberate and it has to be God doing it deliberate parallel between 2016 and the aftermath of the temple down so whatever this this is the prior clause this is the cause, the clause prior is the cause, and now we got the same words being said. Whatever it is, honey, it's got to be major, it's got to be public, and it's bad, because every single one of the three occurrences before were major, public, and bad. Okay, and this seven is telling you this is not going to be a good time. And it's also telling you, because of where Apocrites is, that the cause of the bad time is due to this time. And who caused that bad time before? The foolish virgins. Okay, because Christ closes the door at the bridal party with the good virgins, the prepared ones. Okay? So the remaining virgins remaining are the foolish ones and they're the ones banging on the political door Lord Lord open up to us yeah and when he does it's not good now what that ends up meaning I think is we're looking at a four stage rollout but I gotta figure out how I'm gonna say it so I'll hang up for right now <laughs>